Good afternoon, Beckman Catholic. Mr. K with an update for you on Monday, May 18th. Let's get started today. And we'll start with an update on what's happening in the state of Iowa. So just a reminder that information is available at uh, coronavirus.iowa.gov. Last Friday, we had additional restrictions that were eased across the state in all 99 counties. However, the group size limitations of 10 for social gatherings and the encouragement of social distancing with that six foot separation is still being done. So please keep those things in mind as we continue to ease restrictions across the state. This is our last week of school, yay. Um, it's not our traditional last week of school, but nonetheless it is. And we thank you for everything that you have done in these last six weeks. A reminder that that calendar for this week is posted on the homepage and will be updated today. So take a look at what additional assignments are due by the end of this week. And a reminder, we just have a few more days to go. I wanna thank everybody for the hard work that they've put in. In particular, I wanna thank parents today. Well, we've asked a lot of you in the last six weeks. There's a lot of things that we normally would do here at school to work with your students that you've had to take on um, through this process. So we thank you for all that you've been doing. A reminder that with this change to the remote learning, we are not having semester tests for the second semester. So there are no tests that'll be given out this week in that traditional semester test format. So the remaining work that's been assigned by your teachers that's on this week's calendar is due by Friday, May 22nd. Let's talk about semester two grades. And this is probably the most important component of today's update. So I ask you to please pay attention to this and I will try my best to walk you through this information. The Board of Education has approved three different options for this year's semester grades for the second term. The first option is to take the grade as listed in PowerSchool, and it's based on all your work from third and fourth quarter. So this would be just like we normally would do in a traditional school year. A second option that's been granted by the board is for students to take their quarter three letter grade as their second semester grade under the condition that they have a passing fourth quarter grade. The third option is that a student may take a pass instead of a letter grade, as long as they have an overall passing grade for the second semester. The reason you may take a pass is that you may have a lower grade than you anticipated, and a pass grade does not calculate into your grade point average. So I have four examples to walk you through to help show where this, how this might work. So the first example is that a student had a third quarter grade of a B, a fourth quarter grade of an A, and an overall second semester grade of an A as you look in PowerSchool. So the options that are available as part of that would be to take the A for second semesters listed because that's the grade that's there. You would have the option to take a B instead of the letter grade because you have a passing grade for the fourth quarter. In this case, that would not be advised because you have an overall grade of an A and that's the better grade. Or you would also have the third option of taking a pass for second semester as well because that quarter four grade is an A. So let's look at another example, maybe one that might be more, more prevalent. Someone had a B for the third quarter, struggled with the online learning and had a D for the fourth quarter, but their overall semester grade was a C. So the options here would be to one, you could take the C as listed, but in this case, the student would be eligible for a B for the second semester because their quarter four grade was passing. And so this is in those examples where you could take the B instead, or the option is there to take a pass as the grade for the course as well because that quarter four grade was passing. In this case, my advice would be you would take option two because that's in the best interest of you as a student with the B, the B for the overall grade. Third example, A for quarter three, failing grade for quarter four, overall second semester grade of a B. In this case, the first option would be available and the third option would be available. The taking of the second quarter grade is not a possibility because of the failing grade for quarter four. So this student could take the B as listed for second semester or could choose to take a P, a pass for semester two um, because their overall semester two grade is still passing at a B. Last example, student C for quarter three and F for quarter four, an overall grade of a D. Again, options one and three would be available. You can take the D as listed or you could take a pass overall. That C is not an option in this case because of the failing grade for quarter four. So one of the things to take away from this as you're working this week is it's really important to have a passing grade for the fourth quarter because it opens up other opportunities and options for you. So parents and students, as you look at the information, take a look at what you need to do in order to have a 
to, and make up in order to get a passing grade for that fourth quarter. That's extremely important as you look at what's happening the rest of this week. So just a little bit about how this process will work. Second semester grades are due on June 5th from teachers. Once those grades have been finalized, we will send out a Google form to parents and students where you can indicate which of these three options you wish to take for your courses. Um, if you're taking option one, where you're taking the grade as listed in PowerSchool, we really don't need the information back because we don't need to make any modifications. However, if you're gonna exercise the option to take the third quarter letter grade when that's uh, available or to take a pass option, those are things that we'll need to know. So please indicate those when you receive that form. Uh, the forms will be due back by Friday, June 12th, and then we will do a verification process to make sure that that is accurate before we enter the grades as final. If you have questions about this, please reach out to me or Mr. Deverick. We'll be happy to answer them for you. Shifting gears to talk about student material return. Senior students can come tomorrow or Thursday, tomorrow from noon to three, Thursday from nine to noon, and return their items to school. All students in grades seven through 11, we will do this next week, May 26th, 27th, and 28th. We are going to have 15 minute appointment slots available for families, and you can go online to the signup.com website. This website will be listed in our other information as well, and sign up for a 15 minute time on a day that, and that works for you. When you come to school, we're asking you to return the following items. Uh, your Chromebook, your charger, your Chromebook case, any textbooks or um, novels that you have at home and any other materials you may have from school that are currently being used. Your lockers have already been cleaned out and the, the items that you had left in them are bagged and they are on tables for you to pick up that day. We also did the same thing with any of the materials that are down in the locker room. So that's all been taken care of. When you come either this week or next week, you'll be able to drop your materials off, grab your bags and you'll be good to go. A little bit about summer activities. A lot of you are waiting to hear about uh, softball and baseball, and I would say we all, we all are as well. I don't have any additional information on that at the moment. Um, what I've heard is that it's anticipated that a decision will be reached on that by the end of this week. So as soon as we hear that information, we will share it with you. A little about driver's education from NICC. Uh, we learned last week that the June class will be held online using Zoom for the classroom component. Right now, the July class is on a schedule. Uh, the February class with Mr. Helkowski, he's still trying to work out that you can meet in person for your last two face-to-face -face sessions. Those of you who have signed up for the June class, you should have received some information about this last week via email from NICC. If you did not receive that information, please contact the office so that we can make sure that you're on the appropriate contact list. Also, some of you may be wondering about summer strength and conditioning. Uh, that decision really depends on what happens with summer sports. So once we hear that, we'll know what we can do for summer strength and conditioning. And as soon as we have that information, we will pass it along. A little bit about STO as well. The awards, first round awards were released last week and we will be sending letters to families this week with that information. So as you receive that, please review it uh, and return the items requested in the mailing by June 10th. If you do not receive a letter and you are anticipating receiving one, please first verify that you're not missing any information in the fax system where you applied for STO, or if you have additional questions, you can contact Nikki in the business office. There are still funds available for next school year in the STO process through the round two application. Those are currently being accepted and will be due by July 15th. A reminder that your application for round two needs to be submitted and verified. So please do not wait till July 15th. Try to have that information in by June 30th. So that gives enough time for the verification process to occur. I just wanna encourage you and let you know that there are still funds available. So if you are eligible, we encourage you, to call, uh, encourage you to qualify. We also encourage you to apply for the STO process. Also in today's email, you'll have an attachment um, from the Iowa Catholic Conference asking for folks to reach out to our federal elected officials in regards to assistance for Catholic schools and upcoming federal coronavirus legislation. See that email uh, for more information on how you can help with that process. On a staffing note, I would like to welcome Mr. Adam Denner to the Beckman Catholic family. He, he agreed to our position as the new band instructor last week. Adam's a recent graduate from the University of Northern Iowa where he received his degree in music education. We are still seeking applications for our Spanish position and, and as well as the assistant principal curriculum coordinator position. So if you know of anybody who is looking for a position that's qualified to teach Spanish or is interested in being assistant principal, please have them take a look at our website for additional information. 
Lastly, some prayer opportunities coming up this week. A reminder that we have adoration on Tuesdays in the chapel, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We'll have rosary for the last time this school year, Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Beckman Chapel. And I also want to congratulate Deacon Nick Radloff, class of 2003 from Beckman, who will be ordained this Saturday as a priest for the Archdiocese. That's at 2 o'clock, and the Archdiocese will be streaming that service uh, at the website listed here at 2 Saturday. So please pray for Nick as he receives the Sacrament of Holy Orders and is ordained a priest for our Archdiocese. Lastly, let's close today with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we turn to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance to those impacted. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful, wipe away their tears, and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I know this is a little bit longer of an update than we normally have, so we appreciate it, and have a good rest of the week.